Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Craig Dyson here with TPUSA Faith and uh, excited to have Monique Dusson with us today. And uh, do you want to give us a little bit of a intro? Tell, tell the people about yourself and the uh, Center for Biblical Unity. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. My name is Monique Dusan, and I am the co-founder of the Center for Biblical Unity. My ministry partner is Krista Bontrager, and together we run a ministry that is really meant to um, take a historic position on conversations of a historic Christian position on conversations of race, justice, and unity. So what we're doing is we are looking at the issues that are in the public eye right now in culture on race, justice, and unity, but we're doing it from a historically Christian position. How would the first century church have responded mm. to some of these issues or understood these issues? What has the scriptures um, said about these issues from the Old Testament you know, through the New Testament? Mm. How do I apply God's eternal moral law to some of the issues that we're, we're seeing? And that is what we do day in and day out. We were founded in 2020, right before the unrest of 2020. We were mm. founded in February. And then after that, we had Ahmaud Arbery, I think Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. And we were just positioned in, in a way that um, when the unrest happened, we were able to answer questions immediately. That's so good. Talk about timing, right? Yes. I remember going into 2020. Now I'm a church planner and a pastor and all we had to do is look at it. We're like, here comes 2020. We're like, this is easy, perfect vision. This is going to be fantastic. And then everything began to unravel and fall apart. Everything. Now for you, some serious things happened in 2020 that kind of created the platform going to a next level. Do you want to talk about that and kind of share that story from that season? Yes. So in, I mean, we started a podcast called All the Things in 2019. And so we had been going strong on our podcast for about a year, but we were only, you know, getting 50 views. It was like no one knew we were out there, but we had been talking about things like critical race theory. Mm. We had talked about some of the critical social theories and looked at, you know, what does it mean for us to, as believers to be unified together? How are we looking at reconciliation? Note, I didn't say racial reconciliation, right. but how are we looking at reconciliation among believers? And so when 2020 and the, the unrest that started with Ahmaud Arbery first broke on the scene, we were ready. Now, a lot of the social media thought because I was black, well, then I supported BLM. <laughs> And so they pushed our content out to thousands of people and people immediately um, found out, you know, that there was a Christian group there that was talking about these things from a historically biblical position. Wow. So I'm super thankful, you know, that that our content was pushed out. Unfortunately, it was because they thought I was part of BLM. <laughs> and when they found out that I wasn't, then, you know. They kind of shut it down, but we're still going strong. We are still having conversations. We're touring, not touring, but, you know, traveling around the country, having conversations and bringing people into a room, you know, or a, a conference to understand not what you think about race, justice, and unity, or what I think about it, but what does the word of God say about mm, it? That's so good. I know there's been a couple of times over the last year, year and a half where I've had an issue come to me and I'm like, I need to think about this. And be like, you know what? I think I'm going to pop on to Monique Social over here and see what, if they're talking about it. And you are. Like you always seem to be in the tip of the spear talking about the issues that are engaging culture right now. And one of the biggest ones that is popped up on the radar, you know, coming out of 2020, all of a sudden, uh, Black Lives Matter, BLM is a household name. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of people who didn't know about that before are just like, yeah, of course, this is something that I should be good for and support and get behind it without really understanding what was happening. So you guys are doing so well at addressing CRT, critical race theory. Um, there's so many in my world, we've seen a lot of um, churches and pastors that right away just jumped on it. They were yeah. like, they're like, yeah, this is what this is what we're supposed to be a part of. This is what we should be championing. Yeah, this. OK, I can kind of see where Jesus would be about this. Let's go. Why do you think so many uh, pastors and leaders and churches just jumped on that the way that they did? Because nobody wants to be a racist. I mean, <laughs> so no one wants to be a racist. Right. And so at the risk of not being a racist, mm. many pastors and Christian leaders jumped on a bandwagon that actually just promoted racism. Mm. 
it just wasn't white to black. Right. But it did pr um, promote partiality. That's what I would call it from a biblical position. It presented partiality, but it also promoted sin. So when right. people um, encouraged others to give to Black Lives Matter, what they actually were encouraging people to do was to give to a black trans organization. Mm. And so, you know, here we are, churches sending thousands of dollars. I think BLM recently saw that they raised close to $80 million. Wow. A lot of that money was on the backs of Christians. Mm who without, you know, doing much digging, without a ton of evidence as to what um, what the organization was about, gave their money. They sent their money in to support an organization that it, at the end of the day is doing nothing for black life. Mm. I know like the, the pressure, that front end pressure um, is to, to be able to like have a voice and say something and, and react without actually looking into the things that people are getting into supporting something without actually knowing what you were supporting. I know that there was so much pressure in that early season um, to not be silent, right? Because if silence is violence, silence is complicit. And so the, it created that culture where there was no room for people to, to think and to process and to research and to really find out what was going on to be able to react or respond from, a, from an accurate standpoint. You know, I I hear you and I hear that that is exactly what happened. Yeah. And I have to say that you know, as people of the book, we are called to evidence. So good. We are called to do our due diligence. We are called not to lead people astray. And so, you know, when, pe when people say, well, I didn't have much time to research and this is what the culture was saying. Well, the culture is going to cult. Right. Let's be honest. <laughs> I cannot trust the culture yeah. because they are not people of God. We are either in Christ or we are in Adam. And if you are in Adam, I have to understand that you are going to participate according to Ad Adamic ways. Right. That may not be part of the Christian narrative. We it, it may not be part of that that regenerate narrative. And so I have to go to the word of God. I have to understand, you know what, maybe I need to sleep on this. Maybe I need right. to do some more digging. Maybe I need to, you know, talk to someone else and not just promote uh, an organization or a platform, a book that is going to continue to divide us, that is going to promote sin. Um, but yeah, to say that we didn't have enough time to research. No, we actually did. We do right. have time. It's just about taking the time and not feeling like I must now give an answer to culture. And that's, but that's the pressure. That's the tension that I feel like, especially in 2020, a lot of the church was in. Yeah. It's, well, culture's calling me to, you know, Coke has said, you know, be less white or whatever their slogan was. And so now we need to be like, well, they are not in Christ. They yeah. are not ontologically family. That's good. And so how do I respond from the position of being in Christ? This is where I think we we really could have taken some time to to slow down and to ask other questions. And and so and that's so good because now there's there's been so much course correction for a lot of people. <clears throat> some people um, I've, that I've talked to are like, well, it's it's almost too late. I'm like, it's never too late. Um, They're what trying it, to get that eighty million dollars back from BLM. <laughs> Look, did I keep the receipt? Okay. Um, did uh, what? What encouragement would you give people who are in that process of trying to figure out how to course correct their mm -hmm. thinking and move forward? Slow down. Mm. Slow down, and get into the Word of God. Get into the Word of God. Um, I will give a, a, a shameless plug. Give the it. Center for Biblical Unity has a curriculum out. We wrote a curriculum um, called Reconciled, and it looks at our biblical reconciliation as mm -hmm. believers and how do we move forward in a, a Christ-centered way. This is not about you know racial reconciliation. It's about believers' mm. reconciliation according to 2 Corinthians 5 and looking at how we treat one another as family. Yeah. Um, but I would say that's a great place to start is looking at Reconciled as a curriculum and you can get it from the Center for Biblical Unity .com website. That's a great place because it is looking at scripture first. Yeah. I'm not on there, you know, doing a 20 minute, you know, talk or anything like that. We get people to dig into the word. That's, that's where okay. it is. It's in the word. We don't we have to f to remember that the word of God says that he's given us what we need for life and godliness. Mm. 
And if he's given us what we need, if that's what the word says, then we can actually believe it. Yes. And it's not a, a blind faith. It's not a, a blindness. You know, I'm just going to walk out and, you know, da 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 what I am going to do is I'm going to dig in. I'm going to do the research and I'm going to trust that as I research, you know, like I, I can do this with knowledge. I can do this with excellence. Right. And so I would say, yes, first of all, dig into the word of God first, second, get reconciled. Mm. Um, and then three, you know, have conversations with like-minded people so that you're digging in the word of God together. And, um, you know, that there's, there's community there yes. and pray. You know, make sure that that your heart is in a right posture. Always be um, in a place of asking God to to, you know, reveal the thoughts of your heart and um, and stay humble in that. Isn't it crazy how it's the basics that we have to allow ourselves to stick to mm -hmm. so that we can stay on the right. Like it's not rocket science that we're talking about here. It's get in the word. Yeah. It's get in Christ centered community. Yeah. It's be a person of prayer, like seek the Lord, seek his heart to find out how he would want to have his people interact in this world right now. Yes. I mean, when we think about Jesus's prayer in John 17, he says, I've given them what they need. Mm. He's given us what we need. And, um, when we look at the glory that he's talking about, the power of the Holy Spirit, like he's given us what we need for our unity. Father, make them one. Mm. He's, he's, I've already given them what they need. Yeah. And so to think that I now need to participate in the works of anti-racism, I need to do all of this extra biblical, extra Christian stuff right. in order for, um, for us to even get to the place of reconciliation to get to the place of unity well that goes against what the word of god says yes now i can look into ephesians 4 and i can see that there is there you know paul lists out things that as believers we need to do but those aren't a, a, a list of things to do because you're white and i'm black mm. they're a list of things to do because we participate according to god's family rules because we are brothers and sisters it doesn't matter if you're white and i'm black right that's so good um, I think even when we look at just the the simplicity of the Lord's prayer, you know, when Jesus is saying, hey, this is what I want you guys to focus on. Number one, remember who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. You're talking to the Father. So let's take five seconds to just think about that. Yeah. And then I think the meat of that Lord's prayer is when he's talking about, hey, the, the reality that exists in heaven is what God desires to see exist on earth. And he's going to do that through his people. So we've got to reconnect to the heart of the Father. We've got to get his desire for what he wants to see through his children. Like you're saying, we're all brothers and sisters. And then figure out by the grace of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit, how can we walk that thing out yes. here on earth? So um, even before we started doing the interview, we were chatting a little bit and, uh, and, and brought up, um, we'll call him Marxist Jesus. Marxist Jesus. There it is. Um, and I think that that's something that that we got to talk about because the, the a progressive way of thinking is like, okay, what happened before is old and we're smarter now. And so mm -hmm. we can throw out what's been before mm -hmm. so that we can pick and choose how we want to move forward because we're so enlightened and because we're so smart and because we're so advanced, right? Uh, yet Jesus is the same yesterday, today, yeah. and tomorrow. So how, uh, speak to that for a moment, just that ideology that people are willing to reject the uh, the historical Jesus, the truth of who he is, like mm -hmm. the full body of scripture uh, to embrace something that doesn't even remotely look like the kingdom of God. How can we change that? Again, get back into the word. It's like, so and, 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 you know, it, but it's also going to take boldness. You know, it's mm. going to take pastors preaching boldly yeah. and standing boldly, even when the church down the block may have, you know, more people drive into it and um, more more accolades come in their way and things like that. It's going to take someone standing boldly and saying, no, actually, this isn't actually you do not have any kind of new enlightenment. Right. You know, like, let's you, your, your heart is sinful. And, you know, any kind of new enlightenment might have been that pizza dream you had last <laughs> night. But what as historic Christians, we believe we believe in God's eternal moral law yeah. or his eternal moral principles is probably a better way to say it. And so when I look in the Old Testament, and I'm not saying that we're saved by the Old Testament because we are not saved by the Old Testament, but I can look into the Old Testament to gain or glean knowledge and wisdom 
about God's heart, about his eternal moral principles. And then I can tra trace those principles through to the New Testament. This is why Jesus, I mean, they didn't have the New Testament when, you know, when Jesus walked the earth. Right. And so he quoted the Old Testament scriptures. These are things that we see repeated. And so when I want to know how to love my neighbor, I can look at the Ten Commandments, but then I can also move into Leviticus right. and watch how that is threaded out, how it's how it's parsed out into in loving your neighbor. And I can look in Deuteronomy and see the same. And then I can go over into the New Testament and I can see, let's talk about James and right. not participating with partiality. We're talking, not, not accepting bribes, all, but all of that is Old Testament. Mm. When we look into to Ephesians 4, I'll go there again. All of that, that's Old Testament principles. You know, being humble, maintaining a humble posture, um, working so that you can have something to share, that you have something to give. These are Old Testament principles, but it's part of God's eternal moral principles so that we can do life together as believers. It's just not, you know, for hit, for this one set community mm -hmm. now. This is now open to barbarians, to the enslaved, free. You know, it is open as the gospel goes out. The, the This is how you participate with one another. Right, it's like a progress the way that God sees it is that his kingdom continues to expand. Yes. And that the gospel message continues to go out. Yes. All over the world. Yes. To every nation, tribe, tongue. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I have to remind some people this all the time because we, I came out of a background where, um, uh, to a degree where the enemy was under everything. Like the devil mm -hmm. was under every rock, turn over them rocks. We got, it's the devil doing this, the devil mm -hmm. doing that. And then, you know, so human nature is we have a we have an extreme counter response if we feel like we need to correct something that was a little off and then we go to the other side we're like okay there's th none, none of that it's just all us being messed up in god and and it's you know it's understanding the full picture it's like yes there is an enemy to god there is an enemy that yeah. knows that you and i are made in the image of god yes the imago day we carry that and every time he sees us he knows that he's lost and he's reminded <laughs> of who he is and his future and so i think that um being able to keep in mind is that the things that try to tear us apart are, yes, within our human nature and our fallen nature, but also the, you know, the work of the enemy that's trying to bring division and trying to divide. And, uh, and I tell people all the time, I'm like, you know, all right, yeah, it's like we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers of darkness. But the enemy does work through people. Yeah. And so we, we have to, we have to confront people. We have to, you know, like Paul said in Corinthians, we have to tear down those, those mindsets, those arguments. We have to tear those things down, but we don't just tear it down. We're, we're also building them back up by teaching them the things of Jesus. Yes. And so when you, when you kind of look at the, the landscape of the next, you know, let's say the next two to five years, like what, what are some of the things that you see God doing and the path forward as people begin to, uh, I think, respond to the reality of what God is doing? through his church as they begin to kind of wake up. I think, um, gosh, when I look at the, the next two to five years, um, I'm going to start with, with a cultural thing and to be able to answer, you know, um, what I believe Christians actually can step into, mm -hmm. um, on the cultural scene. I think it's a lot of, um, attempts to indoctrinate our kids, right? you know, to get kids to believe that instead of two sexes, there are multiple genders, um, that you don't, you can, you can be a Therian, you can be, um, other kin, you can, you know, be these words that we have not historically used mm. in regards to humanity right. that you might identify as, you know, part alien or that you're, you know, you can, um, you can be born a male, but you don't have to identify as a male or, you know, on Monday you might be a male, but on Tuesday you might be female and on Wednesday you might not, you know, <laughs> be anything at all. You know, your, your gender might be non-binary, you know, right. completely. And so there's this idea, I think on the sex front, because that's what it truly is. We're talking about sex. We're not talking about gender. God created the male and female. Right. It's a sex. Um, the, the, the push for our children to adopt a different lens by which um, they they run with their lives mm -hmm. is is just going to continue to increase. Um, 
unless you know there's a ton of pushback and then just the the cultural narrative of you know the power dynamics how how our power dynamics di distributed between groups who has power who doesn't i think that that conversation is going to continue i think where the church has the opportunity to really step in and help change some of the the current cultural narrative is to really boldly become the light to really boldly say my child is not going to go down this path yes. and whether that means homeschooling christian schooling forming a co-op um me taking a job in a public school to be able to counter some of this narrative yeah. you know it we have to be the the light on the hill we cannot just send troops down into the culture to go out and you know sniff out the nuggets and bring what we think is helpful back up into the church we actually have to take a different mindset mm. and say well whether they cancel me or not whether i'm fired or not i am not going to allow my child to go down this road yeah. my family and I will not go down this path as a, you know, I'm single, I don't have kids. So, you know, how can I work to encourage and equip the body mm. to stand boldly? But it's going to take us coming together as family, understanding what the word of God says, and yes. then actually believing what the word of God says and walking out the word of God, walking out what it says. That's so good. We can't, we can no longer, now is not a time for play. Mm. We cannot pretend that this isn't here. Right. We can't say, well, not my, that's not going to happen to my child. Cause honey, little Susie will get all wrapped up. And before you know mm -hmm. it, she's going to be on the social justice narrative, right. the social justice way of thinking and doing life. We have to use biblical terms biblically yeah. and understand that mm. Justice is the word that is in scripture. The idea of social justice gets so conflated with all of the um, social justice narratives that are in culture, reproductive justice, the, the other word for abortion or, um, you know, marriage equality, marriage justice, um, looking at um justice for lgbtq plus you know all of these things fly under this banner mm -hmm. of social justice but in scripture we have the term justice yes and we have definition for that word and so it's going to take us really saying no i'm gonna i'm actually gonna live this way out whether it's hard or not yes we do hard things we can actually do the hard thing that's so good i know uh, tp usa faith uses the term a lot build back biblical Yes. Right. And that's, that's, that's for everything. Like in our, in our homes and our marriages with our children, that's, that's the key. That's the answer. You know, it's like, thank you, Jesus, for giving us your word mm -hmm. so that we don't have to hope that we can figure this thing out. You've given us the instruction manual to walk this thing out. You've given us the Holy Spirit to be able to have the power to do so inside of us and be bold. As citizens within our country, we also can use our voice, our vote, and our dollar yep. to be able to say, you know, this is this is where I'm putting my dollar. I'm not going to put my dollar, you know, with an organization or a company that is going to promote something that in the end is going to be detrimental to my child. Absolutely. You know, I'm not going to vote f this way for for. Um, either a political party or for a judge or for, you know, whatever platform that is going to encourage my community to abort their babies. Right. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to hold to conservative values, but that takes getting in there and, and doing the reading on the party platforms. Yes. It means, you know, researching who are the judges what is their history as a judge? Who do you, who do you want to represent your community? So yes, there, there is, you know, other steps that we take that are outside of digging into the scriptures, but digging into the scriptures has to be first right. because you don't know how to, you know, you don't know what the, the biblical way forward is and who to even vote for if you aren't understanding what God's moral principles are. That's so good. It's, uh, you know, it's, that's why God's word is the foundation. Mm -hmm. That's what you build on. Yeah. And if that's not there, you know, people want to argue when you get into kind of the progressive mindset of like, uh, you know, whether it's like, you know, the 1619 project, like, you know, we didn't start in 1776, it was 1619 and, and, uh, and removing, you know, the, the biblical foundation of our nation. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, no, what's happening now is we're removing the biblical foundation of our nation. And what happens is when there is something that is built and you take its foundation out from under it, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's going to crumble. It's going to fall yeah. apart. And so you're so right on. We have to get ourselves back to that biblical foundation. But that's the thing that we build on so that we can act, so that we can get out and get involved. My dad, When I was a kid, my dad used to do that a lot. And I didn't understand at the time. He's like, no, we're not. We're not shopping over there because X, Y, and Z. And he was yeah. right. I was like, Dad, you're crazy. I just want to. I just want a beverage. That's all I want. Mm -hmm. He's like, Nope, not from there. I'm like, Okay. And now I get it. Yes. And, uh, and recently, I was reading um, that uh, you know, remember Toys R Us? Yes. They're gone. Yeah. Um, but they they used to be a massive donor to Planned Parenthood. Oh wow. Which to me, you know, if you kind of think about the common sense of a business model, that's unwise. You know, they're 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 donating to something that would kill and murder their their client base yes. which doesn't make sense uh but there's not a lot that does make sense within that within that world yes. but 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 they're gone and it's like you know it's and i think we're starting to see that a lot is that corporations and companies that have gone all in with woke and have gotten themselves with their dollars and their boards and their movements behind uh crt dei and funding all these things that are destroying society like it's starting to backfire because i do believe people are starting to see whether they see it from a christian standpoint or whether they're just starting to see that hey these things aren't adding up it's not two plus two isn't equaling what they said it was going to equal yeah um so i think maybe a, one more question i would ask is um for those who are in the middle right now they're their their heads are kind of spinning they're like this i thought this was i thought this was the way forward um, I thought this was going to be the answer for everything around us, but clearly it's not. Um, what What would you encourage them if they're listening? You know, what what to do? Ask other questions. Mm. Continue to ask other questions. Continue to ask why the two plus two isn't equaling four, but it's equaling like nine, <laughs> you know, or one. You know, ask some other questions. Um, and I I say this on top of and and just assuming that it's already been heard that the scriptures are first that you get in community um, that you're prayerful but ask other questions um, for you know, um, much in, many in the black community I ask I've started to ask the question and um, encouraging other people to ask why have we been 13 percent of the population for you know mm. so long wow well. It's because we are aborting our children mm. at extremely high rates. You know, um, I've asked the question of, you know, if if you are promoting a liberal platform and you think that the this liberal platform is really helping you, well, tell me how is it helping your community? Ask other questions. Right. And you can, but you can ask that of the conservative platform as well. Absolutely. You know, there. I'm not one for partiality, so ask the same questions. Look, read, read the the platforms. Um, if if you're in the middle and you're not really sure where to go, you need to start asking both sides the questions and see which one lines up more with the scriptures. That's good. Because there is going to be a side that does not align with the scriptures. There's going to be a side that um, that is not for your good. Yes. And if it's not for your good, then why do you continue to lean this way? If you look out into your community and all you see is um, drugs being pushed and gangs and, you know, all of this violence. Well, look at the people who are making you promises to get rid of this. Mm. And how long have they been making you promises to get rid of it? Right. Well, maybe you need to change something about your your political position. And, and encourage somebody else to change theirs too. And just see, just test it out. Right. You know, we, we are evidence-based people, people of the book. And so you, you're going to have to, at some point, start to look at what is right before you. So I would say ask, ask questions and see the answers that you get. And continue to ask questions until things begin to make sense. Because I'm, I'm with you. It's not making sense. The two and the two are not equal in four. <laughs> we own like one and nine at this point. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I would say is have conversations with people who may not agree with you. Yeah. You know, don't be in an echo chamber or on your social media platform just being fed the same thing. Because the way that the social media platforms are, are designed, it's to continue to keep you in an echo chamber, ch echo chamber so that you're always upset about something. Yeah. And all of your friends are always upset about this same thing together. Yeah. Get out and talk to somebody in real life. 
you know, so good. have have the the, the upset conversation. Nobody wants to be upset in in, for, in person. Right. I'm gonna get behind my keyboard and I'm gonna tell you. No, come tell me to my face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me know really what you're thinking. If you if you're that big and bad, because I actually might have a better answer for you than what you think I have. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, ask questions and um, definitely get into real conversations and be willing to go again. Don't just cut people off because they don't agree with you. Right. You know, and if you were on the other side of it and someone's coming to have a conversation with you and you know they're not going to agree with you, be patient. Yeah. Be kind. Exercise the fruit of the spirit. But, um, yeah, I think that would be two of my of my things right that's, now that's powerful i mean I, I i think what at the end of the day a lot of what you're saying is like hey we gotta slow down and and not be lazy yes just not be lazy it's like put the time in like if if you are um recently i saw i was doing some research i'm like yeah, i was like I, th- I feel like we have a biblical literacy issue in our yes. in our nations within the christian community and uh, and unfortunately i was able to to come up with stats that prove that like mm-hmm. there's it's somewhere around 91 percent of of people who consider themselves um christians that are not re- that read their bible maybe once every two months wow and i'm like once like was that like your verse of the day from mm-hmm. the, from the bible app or or you actually cracked it open or you were scrolling through and saw somebody else's yeah. you know verse of the day or is it actually getting the word but even if you are getting in the word once every two months i'm like good gracious no wonder we don't Mm -hmm. have that revelation of who god is and how he desires us not just to live but to interact with the world around us there's no reason why we don't mind delegating our parenting rights to an education system that's destroying our children Mm -hmm. and we sit we sit back and shrug our shoulders like i guess i don't know i guess you know got a free range parent here gonna let my kids kind of do what they they'll figure it out no they won't that's why you're their parent. Yes. That's why you train a child in the way they should go. Might be some kicking and screaming. Yep. It might be <laughs> there might be some issues there, but you you do your job as a parent and you ask for God to help you every single day. Yes. I think you really hit the nail on the head when you um, when you talked about laziness. You know, I don't I don't know and I don't, I don't want to be you know um, super harsh. Um, I want to definitely you know exercise grace and. I don't, I don't know that people um, are intentionally lazy. Right. But I think that our culture has presented the easier route. Yeah. Very it's, well put. It's an easier route. And yet, when culture now comes to us mm-hmm. as believers and say, well, you need to do the work. You know, um, white silence is violence. You need to speak. Or, um, you know you need to post your black square you need to you know whatever the work you need to read these books you need to do this march culture will put forward so much work that we have to do and many times what i've seen since 2020 is a large number of christians jumping on this bandwagon to do this work but that work is not leading us to the two plus two is four. Right. That work is leading us to $80 million to a organization that supports the black trans movement, but doesn't actually do anything for your black family. Wow. That work is leading us to division. That work is separating churches. Mm. The, you know, we, we read books like white fragility or Ibram X Kendi's, um, how to be an anti-racist, um, how to be an anti-racist, you know, but it's, it's just more work. Yeah. And in Kendi's book, he's quite clear that you have to support all of these other things and do the work for all of these other groups as well. This isn't just about race, <laughs> but when we look in the word of God and we see that work, Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't, that, 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 I don't know if I'm up for that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we either side is going to have a work. Yeah. The biblical side is that we, you know, do not participate in partiality, that we actually, you know, work, that we look um, look back at the creation mandate and the way that God has set us up to do, um, to participate in the earth and to participate with one another. When we get to the Old Testament, I mean, to the New Testament, and we um, see like the writings of Paul and how we participate as family with one another. Well, I can't participate in family until they pay reparations or until mm. they X, Y, and Z. Well, wow. that that work over there is is 
futile it's it, it's going to end the work that that is put forth in the scriptures mm -hmm. is our our responsibility toward one another that's so good and it it doesn't separate us out black and white it doesn't separate us out young and old it doesn't you know in, in this partial nature yes you know the the older women teach the younger and things like that but what i'm saying is that the the scriptures don't don't um say well you're better than or you're just a you know right. we're all in this together mm -hmm. whereas that the work of culture is continuing to divide us if we are gonna have to work either way you know i would much rather be doing <laughs> this work that calls me to go again with you that tells me to be long suffering to forgive to me myself come before you and ask for forgiveness rather than this work that just says you know well you are always a this and you are always a that right and there's no hope for true unity mm. that's so good and yeah well well done bringing that to a place because you know it's not for most people it's not an intentional laziness but it's just every everything's like right here right mm -hmm. everything's like i can i can do this and do this oh that's that's what i believe now it's like wait what hold on mm -hmm. and faith um I'm, i never believe somebody when they're like you know i'm not really a person of faith i'm like it's impossible everyone's a person of faith faith has a lean yeah so it's either your faith is going to lean in one direction or it's going to lean in another and so if you if your faith leans in the direction of putting your faith in god and trusting his word that when things do begin to compile and pound up you know you're going to lean to the word to be able to hey i need to i need to reassure that foundation i think if, if i were to challenge like a lot of christians i would say hey I'll check your lean you mm. know which which way are you leaning and 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 then allow allow the pressures of the world if you're leaning towards god allow them to push you down because it's going to push you down to the word you've done such a fantastic job of leading us in the direction um, of getting ourselves back to the biblical foundation rooting ourselves in the word of god and um and hitting a lot of stuff that just is going to hit home for a lot of people they need to know how to find you how to connect with you how to listen to to what you're a part of in the, the center for biblical unity so um where can they follow you yeah um you can follow us on instagram or on facebook facebook it is center for biblical unity on instagram it is biblical underscore unity the same at twitter biblical underscore unity you can connect with us um, on our website at centerforbiblicalunity.com. And I think that's how you can, that's, that's all the ways, all the places. Make sure to get the reconciled curriculum if mm. you have questions, if you're wondering about the biblical stand for reconciliation. Um, I have a friend who says, um, races do not reconcile, hearts do. Mm. And I, I just think it's so... It's so important to understand that our reconciliation as believers is because of the work of Jesus wow. Christ. It is not because you came to a table and had a meeting with me and I got to vent my my frustrations and emotions and you were complicit and then you, you know, did your repentance. Wow. No, our our hearts reconcile to God the Father yeah. and then he brings us into reconciliation together as believers. That is so good. Well, make sure if you aren't, make sure you're following, make sure you're getting on that curriculum and uh, get it to as many people as you possibly can. Monique, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thanks for having um, me. This has been an incredible conversation it's and I know good. I got a lot out of it too. So I hope, I hope you did as well. Thank you. All right.